Hi, my name's Laura and today's video will explore what neurodiversity is and people who may identify as being neurodivergent. Neurodiversity is a term that more and more people are identifying with and as a result, more awareness of the subject is being brought about. Neurodiversity is an umbrella term that incorporates many people recognising the unique differences in how our brains work. So simply put, our brains work atypically. It is thought that up to one in seven people are neurodivergent in some way. But what is neurodiversity? The University of Harvard Medical School states that neurodiversity recognises all people's diversity, specifically how people with neurological or developmental disorders may process information differently. As a result of processing information differently, we view the world differently to how neurotypical people would, and this includes life and day-to-day -day tasks. The term neurodivergence was first used in the 1990s by a lady who was herself autistic. She used this term to describe herself and people like her to increase the acceptance and inclusion of people with neurological differences. Throughout this movement, the aim was to embrace and shine a light on the benefits of neurodiversity. As such, neurodiversity is an umbrella term that identifies people whose brains work differently. There are a wide range of conditions that fall under this umbrella term. For example, people who are dyslexic, autistic, have ADHD, OCD, dyspraxic, or have dyscalculia, alongside many other conditions. Using this term helps us to identify as being different without the need to state our condition to the rest of the world. But this also helps us to create a community of similar like-minded people where we can embrace our differences together and help one another. Two common conditions under this umbrella are ADHD and autism. Autism is a developmental condition with a vast spectrum affecting people in very many different ways. Autism is commonly associated with differences in behaviour, communication, ways of expressing emotions and learning. An autistic brain works very differently from the way a normal brain would. Similarly, ADHD is another common developmental disorder, specifically in children. It is characterised by periods of hyperfixation, inattention, hyperactivity and strong emotions. Again, similarly to autism, it can cause a range of social, behavioural and learning barriers. These conditions can affect a person's life in many ways, especially as they go through school and then later on in the workplace. So how can the workplace foster neurodiversity? Neurodivergent people can face many barriers in the workplace, common obstacles that neurotypical brains may not, may not even notice or understand. In the workplace, each individual's strengths and talents can be utilised while supporting their differences and needs. So for example, I can struggle with leaving tasks half finished. I need to finish my current task before I move on to the next one, otherwise I can become quite overwhelmed, I be can become upset, especially when I realise that I've left something half done. And once I walk away from something, I will forget about it and it will never be finished. So in the workplace, I need people to let me finish and then move on. Likewise, if I'm in an environment where there's a lot going on, I can't, if there's too much noise, if there's too much running around, so I find some wards far, far too overstimulating and I cannot do it. I prefer a calmer environment, but this is because I can't process all them sensory inputs the same way that a normal person would. So again, I become overstimulated, I can become upset, my productivity is affected. So creating an environment where neurodiversity can be recognised and worked with is essential. So how can employers make their workplace more neurodivergent friendly? So I think there's a couple of categories here that can be fallen into. And the first one is accommodations for sensory needs. So accommodations for sensory needs can include offering quiet spaces, making people aware if there's a regular fire drill or other loud noises that could regularly occur allowing reasonable adjustments to work uniform, allowing people breaks to move about, and allowing people to use fidget toys or stretchy toys or just something to stimulate them so that they can focus on the task at hand. And then there's the communication barrier. So accommodations for clear communication can include communicating in a, in a person's preferred format. So for example, if someone talks to me, 
and they have a lot to say, I can guarantee after the first two sentences, my brain switches off. I have no clue what you've said. None of it has gone in. But if you write it down in clear bullet points, I can then process that and work with that. Use concise, precise words to avoid misunderstandings. So if you use too many words, that can be quite overwhelming for somebody. So keep it clear, keep it short, keep it concise. Breaking tasks down into bite-sized chunks so that it's not as overwhelming and it's easier to understand. And avoid making people read between the lines. Be clear with what you want because especially autistic brains, they can't read between the lines and they will take what you, some, some people with autism will take what you say quite literally and you might not mean it. <laughs> and then there are a couple of other accommodations that might be helpful. So for example, giving full warning and explanation of plans change not assuming that somebody is breaking rules on purpose maybe they're just not quite aware or haven't fully grasped the workplace etiquette don't stereotype people and just please be kind and patient most accommodations are quite reasonable and most people who identify as neurodivergent would happily explain their needs to an employer and i certainly would be quite happy to work with my employer to make my work work. This is just a quick overview of what neurodivergence is, people who might identify as neurodivergent and workplace accommodations and thank you for watching.